It's okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers, uh, Build It uh, 2019, to invite me to come here to give a speech. So I'm very happy to, this is the first time I come, came, uh, came to Estonia. So it's interesting, I've been to Latvia, uh, uh, Lithuania, but this is the first time to Estonia. The, I think the people is very nice, very nice. Yeah. So the, um, I introduce myself, the, my name is uh, Mokcheng Ong. I'm a professor at University of Stavanger from Norway. So I will introduce uh, my university and the city. So that because uh, we, we, I'm a professor, so I'm also doing educations, so the student can come to my university to study for marine and offshore technology. So the, I'm the member of the Norwegian Academy of Technological Science and also the leader of the Ocean Technology Innovation Cluster, Stavange. So we have the, like a center with uh, 10 professors doing different topics. So, the, so today the topic of my presentation is floating offshore wind turbines. But this is part of the, my presentation. I also introduced my university and uh, the, the off marine offshore technology. So look at here, it's, uh, it's Tavange. So where is Estonia, Tallinn? It's here, correct? So the, we are same, almost the same latitude, but we near to the North Sea. And uh, you can see that the Stavange is the oil and energy capital of Norway. I think most of the people know that Norway is the larger export of the oil and gas in Europe. So the country is quite rich. And you have a lot of oil fuel here. You also have the high winds, uh, Scotland wind pilot, uh, pilot park here. And um, this is our campus. We have uh, 1,600 uh, faculty, administration and service staff and 12,000 students. Uh, 1,560 international students and 265 PhD students. Yeah. So basically, it's all in one campus. The and our university is the, the fifth uh, largest university in Norway. And uh, we have this marine and offshore technology uh, master program, five years uh, master program. And, and, and they are, I think the, now, the, according to the survey, we are the number one in the mechanical engineering, that we get a very high points from the student feedback and industry. So most of the students actually, they get a job. Yeah. So this is important, correct? Because the students study, they need to get a job afterwards. And uh, this is our university. We have Faculty of Art and Education, Faculty of Health and Science, Faculty of Performing Art, Music, and Faculty of Science and Technology. I belong to Department of Mechanical and Structural Engineering and Material Science. And we have Faculty of Social Science and UIS Business School. So this, our, our department so far is the largest uh, department uh, among all the departments. We have the uh, energy and petroleum engineering, but we do have the, we have this marine offshore is in this, this department. So this is a study program. Uh, I'm the leader of the marine and subsea technology. So I'm the professor, the leader, and also we have several professor cover all the different courses. And the study program, so we have PhD programs, two-year master marine offshore study program, and five-year straight master program. We have around 600 students in total. Okay, come to our university. We have the strategy area, which is the oil and energy, ocean, health, ICT, which is the IT, infrastructure, and safety. And I'm the person in charge of the oceans. And we have the, then we link to this cluster. We have the 10 professor here working from seven departments, working on different topics. And first, uh, you know about uh, Norway also export a lot of salmon. We have the uh, fish farming. With this fish farming, is, uh, we, we have the, around uh, 400 meters, and we can produce uh, 2 million uh, salmon for this. It's a new offshore fish, fish cage. It's a FPSO, kind of SPSO, but we, we modified it to be the fish cage. Also, we modified the semi-submersible with fish cage also. And this is done by our master students. They have done the simulations, and also the PhD have done the job. And also, we are doing the, the pipelines, all the 3D simulations, all this is done by the students, our students. And ROE, and also the um, vertex into vibrations for this. Because first, I just want to introduce before we go into the topics. And one of the areas is offshore wind. And we have done the fully coupled models for the, for the bottom fixed uh, turbine, 5 megawatt, and also the floating turbine. 
And also we study the, the hydrodynamic loading on the offshore structures with all these uh, simulations. We access to the supercomputer. And the last area actually is field crossing because we're going to build seven large bridges to connect the island together. And you can see that all this knowledge are interlinked. And why we have these four areas? Because there's, there are the job markets. Because the student, after they get education, they can get a job in this area. These are the jobs in, in Norway they can find. Okay, now the, I come to, to this uh, center. We are trying to cover all the activities in, in these figures. If this is, a, I think, it's a pretty nice figure. I include one if the offshore, offshore bridges, and this is a submerged bridge. We're going to, to design and build it because we want to connect the island. We want to take away the, the ferry with the bridges. And we try to cover uh, from different water depth, you have different activities all different activities. So in our research center, we're trying to cover all the activities here. So we have a, a offshore wind here, and bottom fix, and floating, and also the fish cage, all this. So before we can do this, we need to have a competence. Okay, what are the competence? Uh, so now I talk about myself. I have around uh, uh, five PhD, two postdoc, and seven master students. We are working on the, this marine advanced competitions. So two things, like you work with the industry, you want the quick solutions. You cannot like one simulation takes like few months and <laughs> all run away. Nobody actually want to recruit the engineer in this way. So then we are doing the quick solution with like lifting operation, marine operation installations and uh, fully coupled models, all this. This is a quick solutions. But all these quick solutions, they need to have the better hydrodynamic coefficients, the good coefficients, so that you can have a good estimation of forces. Then we have the high fidelity uh, uh, model, which is the marine uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics, marine CFD. So you can see this is 24 million mesh, the CFD simulation we're using the supercomputer because we have the access to the supercomputer to do the job. So before we can do this, we need to have a tools. What kind of tools? Uh, CIMA actually is developed uh, by my previous employer. It's a, marine Tech is a, now it's called Syntef Ocean. I think it's the largest uh, uh, marine research centers in the world, one of the largest. And we have the, developed this uh, uh, code. We can do the lifting operation in the offshore and also the fish catch simulation, the semi submersible and also the vortex induced vibrations. And of course, it's the offshore uh, wind, yes. All the designs and do the simulation, the global design, the global dy dynamic analysis, and also the design. And this is, uh, we also teach Ocaflex, the software, and also Abacus to do the, all the fully coupled models. And talk about the, the CFD, we have uh, using this open form because uh, we also promote a lot of open source. Uh, and this is done by by our student together with the company, we try to solve the, you know, you, if you design the pipeline with the vortex induced vibration, you can use the guideline, DNV guideline, you have this. But the wake induced vibration at the back is very difficult. So we do the simulations and find out the wake induced vibration on the second pipelines. And so far, we have the computational resources, we have the access to the, the national, we have, I think nationals have two machine cluster, it's around 56,000 CPU. We can have access, and that's mean. But we buy the, we got the access to the, the CPU hours. Like one year is three million CPU hours, so we can we can run 345 CPUs uh, for 365 days non-stop. So we can do a lot of simulation. So I, assume, I I would like to invite like Estonian student if you collaborate with our university, you also can come here to use the the computational powers. And in house, actually, I we also invest a lot of money on buying supercomputer. We have 584 CPU calls for the small scale uh, simulations. And uh, this guy is Toto Iverstal. He's helping me to take care of the Unix system. So this is uh, our in-house supercomputer. Okay, so I give an introduction about um, uh, my university and also the, the study program, everything. So you have the basic idea now, but today the topic is offshore wind because uh, I was told to talk about floating offshore wind turbines. And uh, so this is the four areas uh, we focus in our university, but I will focus on offshore wind turbine. And what we have done for the offshore wind turbines, first we have, as I say, we can do the global analysis of turbine for the floating and, uh, and the bottom fix. 
And this is the uh, vertical axis wind turbine. We did a lot. We have a fully coupled. It's different type of turbine. We have a spa type and also semi-submersible and also the TLP. The good about the vertical axis wind turbine is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is rotate in this way. So you do have the balance of the moment. It was good. And we have published, recently we have published one journal paper or in energy is to how to imp improve the energy gain. Because when we install the wind turbine, uh, we, it's the cost is high. So we want to get as much energy as possible from the wind turbine. So you look at this, this torus. Torus is what? It's the wave energy converter. So we put in the wave energy converter here to study the, the dynamic response of the turbine. We found that, uh, we do the power assessment, we found that with this wave energy converter, we have gained 7% of the energy without losing any wind energy on the top. So this is a try to combine the wave and the wind energy together. It's done by the fully coupled models. So we have all these models. And also we study the, the wave loading, all this, to study the wave loading, to predict the hydrodynamic coefficient correctly for us to do the simulations. And this is the compare with the experiment data. So you can see that after we do the conversion study for the CFD, and then we compare with the experiment data for the surface elevation, we're able to hit, to get the slamming force because this is breaking waves. So breaking wave and non-breaking wave will be different. Uh, the, the forces on the, the structure will be different. And also we did a lot of insulations uh, for the turbine. Like for example, this is wind float. Uh, they have manufacturers and then they tow to the side. So for this type of semi submersible I will talk about that later. Uh, it's easy to be con uh, a connected, construct on the side because you just tow it and connect to the, to the mooring system. So this is one lift, like they built the, the structures, the jacket. After that, they have one lift, single lift and install on the transition piece. So we also can do the hammering, all the hammering, how to con construct, study the, consider the soil, everything. And also we can do the, the marine offshore maintenance by using this uh, software to study the, the maintenance uh, operations and situations. And uh, we also study the, how the, when we install the wind turbine, uh, the, all the hydrodynamic uh, uh, dynamic response of the forces around the wind turbine, we shooting effect from the non-stationary process, and also the, all the damping force for this uh, non-stationary -stationary process. So this is done by uh, one of the students uh, doing uh, how to do the installation of this tripod into the sea. And for the jacket, we have a mating. So this is pre powering so they move the, the jacket and then try to install here. So we do the dynamic analysis to, uh, to or the lifting, lifting operation and study the landing of the jacket leg into the pre-installed pipe and compare the installation using different vessel types. Yeah. So we can do the simulation and do all this design. Yes. Okay, so I zoom in to tell about what kind of project we can do. And now I would like to give the, like, the topic on this floating wind turbine. I will talk about uh, the, the bottom fix and also the, the floating a bit and com make the comparison and talk about different uh, 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 aspects. And I checked the uh, water depth, is the average water depth is the Baltic Sea is 38 meters and the maximum is 115 meters water depth. So the, if you want to build the turbines and then the, will be around uh, 60, 80 water depth. And that water depth actually, if shallower is like 45, if you go further away, because you, want, you don't want to see the wind, wind turbine, so you want to build it fur, further away, it means that the water depth will be deeper. Then you, you need to choose the, the, the choices, the good choices. And, um, and also the constructions, uh, because we need to, all these turbines, we need to be very stable and all this. And, and no need to worry because they have a lot of turbines already built and they are still alive and doing very well. Yeah, and I tell you something that I can give an example. I will talk about that because they're going to build one near to the Norway. Uh, it's 11 times uh, 8 mega megawatt. It's 88 megawatt, and they can reduce the CO2 emission like the one 100,000 car every year. So actually, you can have a lot of CO2 uh, emission reductions in that way. You know, yeah. Okay, so the outline of the the second part of the presentation 
is the introductions and why floating offshore wind turbines. And feasibility of a floating offshore wind turbine in the intermediate water depth, because it's expensive to build the, the turbine. So, so especially the, when we build it, uh, we need to transport the electricity into the, to the shore. And then the, that is a high cost. So that's why we need to actually have to study the feasibility because we cannot just simply invest. We need to know that because we have this uh, LCOE, levelized uh, cost of energy, you need to uh, get back the, the investment to sell the energy. And uh, installation of offshore wind turbines, I will talk a bit and brief about uh, high wind uh, Scot Scotland Pilot Park. This is the first uh, floating offshore wind turbine park. I think a lot of people can get this information from internet also because it's open and also you can get it from Wikipedia, all this, yeah. But I will make a brief on this. Okay, look at the Global Wind Power 2015 uh, based on the Global Wind Energy Council. You can see every year the, uh, the wind actually is increasing. Yeah, so the, based on the data, uh, now it's 432 gigawatt until the 2015. It's increasing very steeply, the gradient. And look at the Global Offshore Wind Power 2015. It's 12.11 giga gigawatt, including 3.39 gigawatt installed in 2015. Because I didn't gather the, the data uh, afterwards, I expect it's more, much more because uh, the turbine, the, the, the wind farm was built more. Okay? So you can see that uh, it's important to have this, uh, uh, the importance of the offshore wind powers keeps increasing. But, but this is not only one region, it's the, the whole whole world actually doing this, okay? Even the EU is promoting this. And why offshore wind? Why offshore wind, okay? We need to have a reason to have offshore wind, correct? Why offshore wind? First, we have higher wind resources and less turbulence. Do you know why? Because there's no less obstacles in the wind, in the sea area, so you get a better wind resources and less turbulence, so you get a good quality of wind, okay? and large ocean areas available so that uh, we, we can uh, build a uh, uh, farm and then uh, we will have a better uh, space. And coastal areas, region are where the population are the most dense. Energy consumption the highest and suitable site for onshore wind the least available because you want to beat the wind turbine onshore and it, because you want the energy because it's the dense area, correct? You need the energy. But but it's, uh, it's not good to build the uh, onshore wind turbine there. It's, it's a lot of people living there. So it's moved away a bit offshore. You don't see that uh, uh, very clearly. And actually, indeed, it's, it's quite a good option. Yes. Uh, minimum visual impact when located larger than uh, 10, 10 kilometers. It's larger. You, do, you, you, do, you cannot see that very clearly. So it's, it's good. You have the, this uh, minimum uh, visual impact. And you know that uh, actually the, for the offshore wind turbine, is, is, is a floating turbine actually is easier to be installed because you can manufacture in the factory first. After that, you just bring to the site and install it. So it's, it's cheaper than the, the, um, the bottom fix if the water depth is large. Okay, now because of that, I link to why uh, floating offshore wind turbines. Uh, the advantage of uh, having this uh, floating offshore wind turbine, uh, I'd like to compare the floating uh, versus the bottom fix. Because now you talk about if you want to already decided to build the wind turbine, already decided, okay? Then what kind of choice, choice you need to choose? Then you choose whether the floating or the bottom fix. Okay, in deep water, the floating actually is cheaper than the the, the the bottom fix, because it's not possible to build it at all. Like for example, the monopile, the larger water depth can go is 30 meters, but 30 meters is extreme. You, you know why? Because man, best, uh, normally the diameter of the monopile is around five meters. And let's say if you want to go the larger depth, you need to have extra large uh, uh, monopile support. And right, eight meters, is difficult to get factory to build it. The manufacturing cost is expensive. so. Finally, actually, the event, the, in the deep water, the floating, the cost is lower than the bottom fix. For the intermediate, intermediate water depth, like for, for example, like the 30 meters, 
45 meters, 60 meters, to the deep water is 100 meters, okay, between that region, then we have a difficulty because we need to talk about the, um, but one thing about floating is like the cost of the floating structure is less dependent on the water depth and, and, and local soil profile because you have the foundations, okay, it's, it's there already, and then you have a floater, no matter how deep you float, it's the same sub, uh, substructures, correct, the floater. So you just need to connect with the, the, the morning line. So the more important thing is the morning line. I will talk about that. So redesign of the floating structure is not required because it's float, floating there. You have designed the structure for some of this floating. You can float in the 45 meters, 60 meters, 70 meters. It's the same, the floater. So the difference is the morning, the morning system. And you reduce the cost and you save the environment because you less manufacturing. So you do need to make many types of the, the floater for this case, okay? So redesign of floating structure is not, not required and easy to decommission because you just decommission and tow it away. Like for example, you build a house, you need to demolish, de demolish the house. After you need to clean the house, all, all, all the, the, the thing you have destroyed, and it creates a lot of uh, uh, pollutions, maybe in air or what. But this one you throw away and then you go to the safety side and then you, you, you fix it. So, and, and very easy for semi-submersible. You know semi-submersible uh, type? And then easy for them to install because you just throw it to the side and connect to the morning system. That's it. So it's easy for installations. So this is the, like, the advantage of having this floating offshore, offshore wind turbines. Okay, then talk about, so the topic now is limiting water depth dependence criteria for floating offshore wind turbines. And we have the challenge, as I mentioned, we have the challenge because uh, if an intermediate water depth, you have a challenge of the, of the, for the morning system. I will talk about it later on. First, I would like to introduce all the different types of the, of the offshore wind turbine. You have the monopile, as I mentioned, is zero to 30 meters, and the power is two megawatts, highest. And you have a jacket tripod, and then you, it's the 25 to 50 meters, is two to uh, five megawatts. So this is kind of the bottom fix, bottom fix turbine. And if you have a deeper water, you want to go far away from the shore, then you, get, you ex will experience the, the deeper water. Then you need to go for uh, larger than 50 meters, but you need to go to high megawatt because since you go for the deeper water, the substructure is expensive, okay? So you want to get as much, much power as possible, then you can have it because you have larger space and better wind quality. Then you can go to five to 10 megawatt, and for the larger than uh, 100 meters, like high wind, 120 meters in, in, the, in the Scotland pit head side, and then the, you, you need to have the, uh, 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 the spa type. So this is the floating one. So generally, these all different types of the, of the, of the offshore wind turbines. Okay, so this is straightforward, very simple. Okay, now the talk about the different water depth. Then we try to look at the water depth uh, dependence, and this is a simple chart, uh, simple uh, 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 diagram to show the substructure cost, the cost, the money, because when you invest. You, 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 you do investment, you, then you need to spend the cost, the money. Then, then we want to study different water depth. What is the cost? Oh. Okay, then this is a, a, a monopile in the shallow water. The cost is lower, but, uh, but when you go to what, larger water depth, because uh, you need to uh, larger structures, and then you, you, you are uh, larger, then you have a higher cost. And uh, shallow water, zero to three, 30 meters, is very sure is monopiles. You use monopiles, it's good choice. And intermediate water depth, 30 to 65 meters. Uh, I will talk about this more. But uh, deep water larger than 65 is floating. You, you don't need to, to, uh, to check whether you can use bottom fix or not. Forget about bottom fix, it's impossible. Okay, so, so these two water depth is very clear. But, but for this intermediate water depth, then we need to discuss which one is better, okay? For intermediate water depth, question one. Monopile is good or not? Jacket or floating structures? 
And then you come to second question is, for floating structure, what are the technical challenges? I'm going to talk about this today. And what is the economic challenges? The cost and the operating cost and the return, all this, okay? Okay, then we talk about the feasibility of the uh, limiting criteria. The limiting criteria is the feasibility of the, the floating offshore wind turbine in the intermediate water and challenges of this floating off, uh, offshore wind turbine in the intermediate waters. And we have this uh, uh, spa type, uh, semi submersible type, wind float, and also the palesta for this uh, TLP, tension lag platform. So, economical, technically, then we come to the money. It's very realistic. Money is involved, yes. And for the floating, uh, floating horizontal axis uh, wind turbine concept, today I will focus on horizontal axis wind turbine because uh, vertical axis, we did a lot of research, but actually no one actually built it at this moment because when you rotate, you have this uh, fatigue in the twist motion. We need to solve these problems. And uh, for basically in the market is a horizontal axis wind turbine concept. Uh, what are the, the turbine? You have the high wind, which is A, uh, wind float is B, and C is high PR wind EU project. This is a, a big EU project. My friend was also involved in this type of uh, uh, semi submersible. And EDO uh, is here, and hexacon energy design. So you have different types of the wind turbine. Bella Star is a uh, H here. TLP and blue hedge TLP, okay? And for the prototype, we have this high wind. High wind was a, a demo, it's 2.3 megawatt, has been near to the Stavange, actually it's near to Stavange. And they have one turbine there for several years and good uh, production with the energy. Because uh, the Equino, they invest in this Scotland, they will not uh, build the whole farm uh, before they have been, they get a successful result. So they test it near to the Stavange coast then they get a good result and do it. So we have the prototype with high, uh, high wind in Norway and wind float in the Portugal. They, they put it there. You can check on this. You just go to the internet, Google, and then you can type wind float. It's in the North Portugal. They test it now. And the uh, spa and semi submersible in Japan. I, I know this because it's one of my friends, actually, they did it. And, you know, in Japan, they don't have uh, oil, you know, because it's near to the, it's volcano, a lot of volcanoes, and earthquake, they don't have uh, oil. Because the oil, you need a like, long time to stable, then you can get the oil. So they need to go, because of the nuclear problems, they need to go for the offshore wind. And they have designed the wind turbine, and the turbine, uh, according to them, able to sub survive in the typhoon. Because they have a typhoon. So they're able to survive in the typhoon. So they have a spa and semi sub in Japan. This is prototype. And come to the farm. It's high wind Scotland. It's commissioned in 2017 already. They're already in operations. Is floating wind turbine. It's the first floating wind turbine wind farm. Okay, there will be more coming. As I mentioned, that there will be a high wind tampon, which is a eight times eleven megawatt, and they are now planning to build it. But that is near to Norway, in our oil field. Yes, yeah. Okay, first I would like to give the introduction, like the components of this uh, 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 floating offshore wind turbine, you have the wind turbine, you have the roto nasal assembly, RNA, and you have a floater, this bar type, with the rolling system, okay? And also you need to have the dynamic power cables, all this, to, trans to transport the, the electricity to the onshore, okay? So, mentioned is spa, uh, semi submersible and uh, TLP typed. I look at the performance of this because uh, now we talk about if floating, we talk about restoring a uh, moment, a uh, mechanism of the floating uh, offshore wind turbine is floating because you have the, the wind on top. So then you need to talk about the restoring uh, moments. So we talk about ballast stabilizers, buoyancy stabilizer, and mooring line stabilizer. I focus a lot of construction now because the construction, and after that, you link to the cost. Okay? And uh, for the high wind, is a lot of using the ballast stabilizer. So when you get the deeper waters, then you have the, you have the more cost for the, this uh, 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 floater, floater the, the substructures. 
And the wind float actually is the, between the ballast stabilizer and the buoyancy stabilizer in between. And the Kikon TLP is between the morning line uh, and also the buoyancy stabilizer. You can see all different turbines is uh, how they do the restoring mechanism is within all this concern. So they need to think about that, how, when they design for this, okay? So they don't simply design, they just think and what kind of the uh, 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 design is the best for, for, for different water depth. Okay, look at this uh, summary. You have a spa type, semi submersible and TLP. A typical mass for six megawatt. Okay, now since we want to build it, and if we have decided to build it, and we need to do it in a good way, okay? So you have different, uh, like as, as, as uh, just now the guy actually mentioned about uh, uh, pollution in the future. Then we, when, we, when we build it, we need to think about uh, future. So look at the mass uh, for, for the mass of the turbine. It's far, it's heavy because in the very deep water. So it means that you need more construction material for this. And the uh, semi summer super is uh, uh, not so much, less than this, a lot. And TLB is the lowest. But you, also, but you need to make the compromise. You also need to talk about the stability. Like this is good, stable, four star and two star, and TLP is a, a five star, it's very stable. And technology readiness, because this already, it has a farm there, high winds, Scotland, Pilot Park. So the technology readiness is seven, high, and then semi submersible is seven because we have wind float, you already tested. And TLP is around four. And look at the water depth, different water depth. You have the minimum water depth here is 80 meters. And this is 50 meters and larger than 50 meters. Some comments. Installation needs shelter deep water site. First, you need to have to do the insulation in the, in the shelter area, come. After that, you tow it and install it on site. And, you, and for the semi submersible you have active blasting system is complex at add cost because you need, need to consider the ballast. But installation is easy because you just it, manufacture everything and tow to the site and connect to the morning line. And for TLP, it's anchoring system you, and the tendon is complex because it's high tension. It's tension leg platform. So all has pros and cons. So we need to make the compromise to choose the best solutions of it. So for the high wind, actually the, the water depth is approximately one me, 100 meters uh, in the high wind Scotland. A wind flow is applicable in the water depth larger than 40 meters. So 40 meters and 60 meters, I will make the comparison. Uh, uh, the semi summer field is a is, is good choice. So semi-sub and TLP seem to be feasible for the intermediate water depth. Okay, now the, since we know that uh, this is the uh, uh, semi submersible and TLP seem to be feasible, then we need to make the comparison. Uh, talk about the feasibility of the floating offshore wind turbines in intermediate water depth. So the feasibility, we talk about the cost of the energy. That is two part in the co cost of the energy. It's the capital expenditures, the investment, and also the operating expenses. These two, we need to talk about that. And uh, first, we choose two, because since it's intermediate water depth, there's a possible chance with this uh, bottom fix jacket, we want to compare what's the difference between floating and jacket. And this is wind float, and this is the bottom fix, and we try to make the comparisons. And for the cost of the energy, uh, COE, life cycle cost analysis, we kept PEX and OPEX, and this is con uh, con uh, include the procurement costs, installation and transportation costs, and other costs, and this is for operation and maintenance. When we compute the levelized cost of energy, this is the, like, the indicator to, to see uh, how much is the, the cost uh, for the energy uh, 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 productions, for the life cycle, for the wind turbine. So if you want to break evens, then you need to follow this LCOE, for the whole life cycle. They designed for 25 years, uh, generally, and then you see how much energy uh, produced and uh, how much is the, is the cost, yeah. So for this uh, procurement cost, we have the wind turbine, you have the RNA, the towers, the wind turbines, and floater is how uh, the blast uh, uh, system and also marine system. 
And mooring system, mooring line, ankles. And elliptical system, you need to transport uh, onshore and also the, the offshore connection, all this. And for the installation and transport, we have the installation cost, installation the floater, uh, mooring system, installation the uh, electrical system, and also the commissions. You need to pay for, for that. And also other small causes like project development, uh, project management, legal and financing, 1% around insurance and as of the asset, uh, all this. It's all the, it's called uh, capital expenditures. And operating is uh, the plant operation, the maintenance. Uh, we need to consider the unscheduled turbine maintenance, like suddenly the turbine breakdowns. You need to consider this cost because you didn't predict that you cannot you do not know the turbine is break, break down. Suddenly it breaks down, you need to have this cost. And schedule turbine maintenance, like every uh, month, a few months, you have some uh, service. And equipment and foundation maintenance, because you might have the skull erosions, you know, skull hole. It becomes cost the instability of the structures, and we need to design for that and cater for the cost. And uh, operation uh, expenses, you have direct costs, all this. And also indirect costs, like lost revenue, and other causes like transmission network charges, financing causes, uh, license fees, parts delivery, uh, and, uh, and carrying uh, costs, all this. So this is considered OPEX. Okay, now the, since we have all these terms, we want to compare. The, as I mentioned, this is in the intermediate water depth, around uh, 60 meters, 45 meters, 60 meters. And we want to compare which option is better. So I take the wind float and jacket because they did the study. You can get from this uh, GL Gara Hansen 2012. They have made the report. You can get from internet. And uh, they use this offshore wind farm, a typical UK R3 wind farm, total capacity 504 megawatt. Uh, wind turbine rated power is 6 megawatt, 50 kilometer from the shore. It's quite far. And, uh, and 50 kilometer from the harbors. Two water depth, 45 meters and 60 meters. So they do the, the comparison for this uh, wind float and the jacket. So the CapEx uh, and jacket is less than the wind float, okay? Uh, but the OPEX is jacket is larger than the, the wind float, the maintenance cost. Like the LCOE, they compute. And look at this uh, graph, you have all these uh, uh, causes, which is uh, the CapEx and OX is here. And then you have, you can find that uh, the, for the 45 uh, meters, the, all this LCOE total, <coughs> the breakdown of the CO, uh, COE, the jacket is less than the, the wind float for 45 meters. But for the 60 meters, the deeper water depth, the jacket is more expensive than the wind float. Why? Because you look at this. That's why in this case, the wind float actually is cost competitive to the jacket. And the LCOE of the wind float is insensitive to the water depth ranging from 45 to 60 meters. You can see here, 45 wind float, 60 meters, you see some causes, they are the same. Because it's a floater and the, and, and the, and the connections. So in this case, actually the floating is cheaper than the bottom fix in this kind of water depth. Because it's 45 meters, 60 meters, you can use jacket to do it. So in this case, actually, the floating turbine is better. OK, then we talk about the estimation of the cost. We talk about the challenges of the floating offshore wind turbine in the intermediate water depth. What are the concerns we need to think about it? So I talk about the construction way. Then we have the, this uh, water depth, the waves, the waves loading, because when you are going to shallow water, shallow water, intermediate water, then you have breaking waves, all this. So the wave is uh, with turbulence effect inside and the uh, slamming forces. And also we talk about the water depth dependence component, the mooring line, the anchor, the dynamic cables, all this, because the response is different because you have a waves uh, effect and current effect, wave current combined effect, all this. You have this vortex into vibration, all this you need to consider. So we need to consider this. And uh, also economical criteria and technical criteria. You can see that I will show about this. Once we set at a different water depth, you can see the tension of the morning line change a lot. So actually, indeed, I'm going to have the one uh, new PhD uh, invest by the Equino. 
the 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 start oil previously called start oil because they were, they start, want to study the in the shallow water and what happened to the mooring system because the cost will be increased because because it's lighter you know the mooring line they use the weight actually to make the stabilized things all this is related to marine structures and marine hydrodynamics then we need to actually do the simulation and find out the better solution for that so first I will talk about the water depth. And you can see this image, you have different uh, water depth. So the, when you go to shallow water, the wave stiffness increase. What happened? Nonlinearity of the wave. So the wave become the, when, when the wave propagate in this direction, we have the nonlinearity increase and you cause the wave breakings. So if these uh, wave breakings, uh, it's different, the forces. The wave forces on the structure is different. So we, we need to do it correctly. And also, you know that you can create a lot of vib vibrations, and vibration, all this is very bad for the fatigue. And even you have some uh, nat uh, resonance, re natural frequency, all this will cre create resonance. So we need to do a good design. All this, you need to do spectral analysis and find out the... Because for us to design the offshore structure, we need to avoid the resonance, all this, so that the structure can uh, live longer. Yeah. And the second challenge is the morning line, the anchor, the dynamic tables, is the water depth dependence components. You can see this is a floating uh, structures. You have all the catenary uh, morning line. And for the morning line system, you have a chain, a wire roped, synthetic uh, fiber roped, and also steel piped. They are all for different purpose. So if you have different uh, floating wind turbine, you need to combine with different uh, morning line and different ankles. So this is drag embedded uh, 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 ankles, and this is very bad to take the vertical load. And you have this vertical load uh, uh, ankle, is better for the vertical load, different types. And this is suction pipe, cans, uh, and ankle. This is good for vertical load and the horizontal load. And the last one is torpedo, is this type of... Uh, uh, anchorage system. So the, typically, this is are the mooring system and anchorage uh, for this uh, uh, semi-submersible and TLP t tension leg platform. So I make comparison between two: the semi-submersible and TLP. You have the chain. Normally, they use chain and wire roped. Uh, then you have a drag abated uh, anchor and the vertical load ankles because they can the vertical loads they expect is less because it's the catenary way. And for the tension leg, then you have a steel pipe tendon and you use uh, the, uh, the suction one, suction bucket, because you can withstand the vertical load and also the horizontal load for this case, for tension leg. So basically, they're using these uh, uh, configurations. Okay, effect for water depth on the floating wind turbine system. So as I said, that is the, the turbine is on top, correct? So it's floating. So the turbine is almost insensitive to the water depth. The gearbox, everything that you design for six megawatt or eight megawatt is insensitive to the water depth because it's floating on the on the top. And the floater is insensitive to the water depth because less like semi submersible they're floating. You know, 45 meters also floating there, 60 meters also floating there, 70 also floating there. The change only the morning line. And, but high wind is different because they use the, they need to have a draft because it's blast, ballast a stabilizer. They need to have the draft. Then for the high wind, no. Then they require the draft to be stable. Then you, you have different costs. Not so for the semi submersible the TLP is okay, but not for the spa. Spa is different, okay? And the morning system and dynamic cable are very sensitive to the water depth. These two are very sensitive. So, so the focus of the floating offshore wind turbine for intermediate water depth, we will focus on the morning system and dynamic cables. Okay, now talk about, now we know this is the part we need to look into. Then we can go to the limiting criteria for, then we talk about economical and criteria and technical criteria. And uh, cost of the morning system, uh, you can look at these uh, publications. Uh, it's a wind rated uh, power is by five megawatt. The reference water depth is 200 uh, meter. You have different types of the uh, tension leg, uh, semi submersible and high wind, and also swear, all these different types. So they have made the comparison of the cost. All the cost is here. 
total line length for different types of the uh, uh, turbines, uh, wind turbine, offshore wind turbine, and you have different uh, uh, costs in euro. And make the comparison, we found that the TLB actually is more expensive than semi-submersible and, uh, and, and more expensive than SPA with the same water depth, with 200 meters water depth. So in the very deep water, actually the SPA is cheaper. So we make the comparison. But in the intermediate water depth, semi-submersible is a better choice. Okay, this is done by uh, one of the uh, students uh, from NTNU. He was my junior. In, uh, and he made this uh, sensitivity study. Um, he did uh, this NREL 5 megawatt wind turbine, semi-submersible floater, and catenary uh, line mooring system, and drag and beta anchor. So he built the whole model and do the simulations. So we, he tested uh, 50 meters, 100 meters, and 20, 200 meters water depth with that, and he want to study the tension for the mooring line. Okay, he found that with different uh, like offset away from the from the from the anchorage, anchorage, they found that for the 50 meters, the shallow water, the tension actually increased a lot. So when the water is shallower, so the mooring line actually take larger tensions when the offset is around six meters. So shallow Intermediate water is a challenge for the morning light design. Indeed, uh, we're going to have a one PhD on this in May. We're going to open the positions to do this study, to, to try to solve this, because I already got one position invest from, the, from Equino. Yes. Okay, so now you know about this uh, water depth effect, all these, what kind of uh, choices, uh, what, kind, what type of floating turbine you should choose. Okay, and now the, is the installation of the offshore wind turbine. I will give the... Uh, a brief on this. Uh, for the motor power installations, uh, you need to have the large hydraulic hammers. So you lift up and put in, and after that you start to hammer it into the ground. And power handling tools, grouting equipment, drilling uh, rig for hard seabed. When the seabed is hard, then you need to very hammer it very hard. And the top of the power, because of hammering, then you need to, have, you need to build one transition piece, a huge transition piece. And the uh, transition piece, uh, oversized power, slotted over the top, monopower over the distance of six to eight meters. And after that, you fill in the high density concrete, all this. So the construction is, uh, is pretty complicated for this case. You can see how they actually uh, installed it. And also the foundation are sensitive to skull erosion. So uh, for five meters, diameters, okay? How deep is a skull hole if the soil is sand? You can choose the number in your heart. I will tell you the solutions. Five meters, diameters. Okay? The answer is 10 meters. So you can imagine you have a 90 meters uh, monopower to the hub height, 90 meters to 100 meters, and then you design for the vibrations. Suddenly you have a 10 meters extra skull hole. What, what about the, the, the natural period? Different. All design different. So this is in, important to know. So, so when you have cattle for the design, the stability of the turbine is safe. So you don't see the vibration problem. That is not the issue at all. It's only the engineer did not do design nicely. So we need to do the good design. So students should study hard in the university, you know, because they uh, try to get a good grade. Yeah. This is very important. No. Yes. And for the jacket installations, you have the, this jacket. Uh, you can see this is uh, installed in the Alpha Venture in 2009. You can get all this from internet. Is how the jacket is, uh, because the substructure is jacket, and then the water deck can go up to uh, 40 meters, 50 meters. And on top, you put the, still put the towel. And the steel tubes with diameter of uh, 0 0.5, meter to 1.5 one, 1 meters. I think I published one paper the, three years ago with full lattice structures. You see this one is uh, with the transition piece here. The one I, I propose is the full lattice all the way to the top with jacket bracing, okay? You can download from internet to get it, okay? And um, 
anchored by piles uh, with diameter 0 0.8 to 2.5 meters, weight over 500 tons. Insensitive to the skull because it's a small, small diameter, so the skull depth is less. And stiff the structures, low wave loads because the contact area is smaller because you have the monopile. If you want to design a very large monopile, then you have a larger wave load, which you need to predict. And ex expensive to manufacturing, to, uh, even though the material costs are less because less than monopile, the material costs. But the problem is that you have a lot of brace. You need to do the welding. And it might cause problem because of the, in the sea, the corrosion, it can uh, destroy the, the welded joint, all this. But we need to consider that. And we can install via <laughs> post piling, pre piling, or suction angles. Uh, like post piling is like this you, 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 you move, it's a traditional installation method. Uh, very seldom used in the wind farm now, and normally used for oil and gas. They, they will, uh, the power are driven into the seabed after lowering the jacket. You lower the jacket and power into the seabed. And connection between the sleeve and the power typically secured by grouting. And connection can also be secured by swagging, like the forge, and then you put in. And first use in the batteries uh, wind farm. Uh, they use it in the batteries wind farm because they have the jacket uh, support at the bottom. And pre powering is uh, commonly used. They use the template to secure by the power first. And after that, they're lowering the jacket and try to fit the leg into the pulse. So they connect. So they build the foundation first and connect. And uh, this is considered to be faster than the post powering because it's, you pre built and then you connect. That's it. And do not require much uh, mat as in post powering, save steel, saving steel, and 160 tons in the battery's jacket. So they did the two and compare. They found that this is actually saving uh, a more, more steel, more material and cost. Yeah. For high wind, high wind is like, first they install in the calm water of the field, because Norway has a lot of field. They, first they in, install in the calm water, after that they tow it to the side, and after that uh, they install. So they install in the field, after they tow it, you can get from YouTube, the whole the installation process you can find. It's open. Okay, this high wind. And the wind flow is the same. They first, they're manufacturing. Uh, like this one, you still have a one lift. You need to lift up and install. But this one, they, they build nicely, everything. And then after that, they just tow it to the side and connect to the mauling system operation. So you can get it uh, from the YouTube, all this. And also the principal powers, powers uh, companies. So it's already installed in the north uh, Portugal in, in operation, the demo. Okay, then I talk about the, the brief about the high wind uh, Scotland pilot park. The first, uh, this is the onshore turbine. The height is around 80 meters. The blade diameter is 40 meters, the rotor, the plate. And the uh, demo is 2.3 megawatt. The height is around uh, uh, 208 total height and the rotor diameter is 85 meters. But in, the, in this uh, Scotland, uh, uh, high wind Scotland, and then the, the rotor diameter is large because it's 2.3 megawatt and this is six megawatt. Since they want to build it very big so that uh, they can get more energy. So when you build big, uh, you get more energy, actually the cost is lower. Yeah. So it's good for everything, for environment, everything. Okay. So this is the, the High Wind Scotland uh, Pilot Park is here. It's a Peterhead here, Scotland is here. And the farm consists of uh, five, uh, six megawatt turbines with a total install capacity of 30 megawatt and transmission voltage of 33,000 uh, 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 watt. And it can supply the power to around 22,000 households. And the roller diameter is 150 meters, and overall height is 253 meters. The pilot farm will cover around four square kilometers in water depth. So, so it's 95 meters to 129 meters. This is perfect for the, the spa type, high wind. So they choose the water depth. The water depth, after that, they build, select the corresponding uh, 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 turbine. So the average wind speed in this area of the North Sea is around 10 meters per second, while the average wave height is 1.8 meters, because we need to consider the wind and also the waves, everything, because it's the, the energy intake 
and also you need to consider about the, 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 the structural designs, all this. And 30 meters away, 30, 30 kilometers away from the show, so for the, to transmit the power. So this is generally the, about the, the high wind, so it's five uh, uh, floating turbine. Uh, anchor with three suction angles. As I said, that uh, this is good for the high uh, spa type. You need to have the suction pack uh, ang bucket, the angles, so that you can withstand the vertical and horizontal load. And uh, link together, and after that, they produce uh, the energy onshore. Okay, so this is a uh, high wind Scotland park. Okay, now the, they propose a, a new one uh, recently, 2018, October, they talk about this. And uh, wind farm being considered to the Snure and Gufax uh, is uh, Bergen is here, so it's here. It, the, 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 they built 11 of them to, to supply the energy to the oil platform to reduce the, the CO2 emissions, all this. So they built this 11 uh, times 8 megawatt. Okay, so basically, I, I, it's a summary. Okay, so I give introduction why floating wind turbine, feasibility, insulation, and also talk about high wind uh, Scotland pilot park. So, and these are the references. You can get it from internet. And I would like to welcome you to Stavanger to studies. If any student interested, it's a fun. And this is a, a very good uh, a view. We have this uh, uh, plaque student, you know, the mission is possible. They filmed the movie there, the Tom Cruise. It was uh, near to my university, actually. It's not far away. It's a one few hour trips you can reach there. Yes. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Uh, free to have any questions. Yes. Yes. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, we have a few questions here that are uh, quite popular, but I'm afraid uh, you already answered uh, some of them. Uh, but one question here mm. is uh, uh, about the environmental uh, impact. Uh, what about the um, vibrations uh, effects to the noise or the, the the noise to the fish and, and yeah. everything? Yeah, the noise actually you need to study because uh, that is no, not my I'm not expertise in the, in that area because I'm the more on the marine hydrodynamics and marine structures. But all this concern is very simple because uh, then 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 is we need to use a lot of uh, complicated solution to solve it. And then, of course, you need to carry out the pilot study. The government uh, or the company, they need to invest to get the expertise to, to study whether they have an impact. Like, I give you an example. Uh, recently, you know, the, our university actually the, uh, changed all the electrical uh, warming system into the water base. It, it seemed to, seem to be very good because it's a green energy. You don't use the electricity, uh, you use the water because it can last longer, correct? It's green. And do you know what happened? It made a lot of noise. <laughs> and then, uh, then I, I don't feel comfortable in the beginning. Then I, I asked the, the, ask the technician, they come to my room, they use the, 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 the meter to measure the noise. They found that actually the decibel is not so high. Then after that, uh, I don't feel it at all. <laughs> Every day is the same, I still work there. So it depends on, you, you need to get the expert to do the, to do, do the, do the, the study, all this. Yeah, because I'm not the expert in that area, so I cannot answer this. Also, uh, one more, uh, briefly. Uh, uh, how does the floating offshore wind turbine interact with marine traffic and uh, trade? Yeah, uh, this is important. When you design the wind farm, of course you choose the place, there's the less traffic. Because you're not going to build <laughs> the, the wind farm in the place with the, sh the vessel is go, uh, very busy in that area, correct? Yeah. So, if you want to build the offshore wind farm, of course you need to consider many aspects before you build. You can just simply build and build. Like, it's, if you want to, like for example, in the house, okay, in the housing area, correct? You want to build a garage. If the garage is, uh, uh, the height is quite tall, you need to ask your neighbor. Because the garage, after you build, can, uh, can stop the sunshine. Then the, your neighbor don't get the sun. It's not happy, correct? So all this need to plan nicely before we build. All this environment impact, all this we need to plan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Kas kellelgi on veel saalist küsimusi?
um, in Germany we have. Yeah, I know that. I heard that just now. Yeah, we are from <laughs> Germany. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Norway, in, uh, very close to your country. Yeah, we are starting now to build uh, like a line from the north of Germany to the south of Germany. It's like 30 meters cable, yeah. like eight cables yes. under the earth. And do you know how this cable infect the environment also? And are you planning also like to transport all the electrician through your country? Do you want to build like also this uh, huge? Uh, first, uh, first the uh, environment because I'm not an environmental engineer uh, because my background is uh, marine structures and hydrodynamics. Uh, that, that I do cannot answer so much. But uh, another thing is like in Norway, uh, we have the we have a lot of hydropower. You know, you know, you know Norway is a, a lot of mountains. Yeah. Uh, the hydropower actually is uh, the, the biggest supply energy to the country. Mm -hmm. So the, but we, we invest uh, the research on this uh, offshore wind because it's the green energy. So the, we, we want to focus on this also. Yeah, but for the cables, um, if you want to design all these cables, as I mentioned earlier, you really need to get a specialist to study the environment impact because we cannot just talk like this. First, they need to engage the specialists in that area. They carry out the study because uh, from the people, they will see that, oh, this is not good. Like for example, in your home, I, a, a car, actually some neighbor car suddenly parked in front of your house, correct? You don't feel good, you know, why he parked there, correct? But in terms of laws, maybe he's, he's legal for him to park there. So there's many, many things you need to consider, all this. Then we need to discuss and make the best uh, compromise solutions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. but you are just uh, planning bigger and bigger offshore wind parks where you don't need the energy and you are just building big lines through the whole, whole Germany, mm -hmm. one line, it's like divided again in East and West Germany, it's like yeah. Okay. But, but I, I, I'm sorry. We we're yeah, out okay. of time. Uh, I think the, this uh, your students, correct? You're yeah. very uh, very energetic. It's good. Uh, I'm, I'm here. You you can discuss. Yeah. Anyone who has yes. uh, more questions, you. Uh, you, yeah. can, uh, yeah, you can ask Mook, uh, come to talk by, to me by the lunch. Yeah. I'm 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 here for for today and tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for attentions. Mm -hmm.